We dispel the illusion that we think our thoughts. Observe the thinker thinking the thoughts. Any of these 10 characteristics you might be born with higher frequency. Everything in this universe vibrates at a certain frequency which gives it its unique existence, visibility and tangibility. Any break in this frequency causes the delicate relation of the object to the universe to be broken or altered and makes it exist on a higher or lower plane of existence than before. Humans have strived for a higher plane of frequency than their fellows since the first yogi sat down under a tree to meditate on the deeper meaning of life. This higher plane, call it moksha or nirvana, is the same. Now, there are telltale signs that give away if someone is cut out for this transition process. These signs, if they exist in a person, say that the said person is not cut out for the earthbound and mundane. Instead, they might just meditate their way out of this murk to a higher plane of existence. These signs, read on to find out, are such. If you relate to even two of these, there is a high chance that you can increase your frequency if you try really hard at meditating and yoga. They are as follows. 1. Your moments of lucidity and absolute clarity don't last long but they are decisive. 2. Your dreams are vivid and clear. They are like visions which give you both demons to battle and inspiration to go on fighting. Sometimes they can be exhausting and scary, and sometimes you even enjoy them. 3. You bond very strongly when you do. It's like the meeting of twin flames. Be it family or romance, you bond like there is no tomorrow. But similarly, when cutting the cords you are equally ruthless. But when you love someone, you love with all of you. 4. Time for you is a piece of cloth you are folding. It is far more tangible and far more material. Your perception of it is absolutely transparent and fast, compared to others. 5. You believe in free will and predestination. That greater things are planned out for you, but at the same time, you need to make the right choices with your work to reach there. 6. Your gut has never failed you so far. You are perceptive and your intuition is tuned on point. You can read people's intentions from their body language. Because your intuition has turned out to be right almost all the time, if not always, you never fail to trust it and you always follow it and act on it. 7. People are naturally attracted to your personality like ants or to sugar. This is because you are a born leader, chock full of charisma and that intangible spark that separates a Martin Luther King from a crowd of people. People come to you for advice and help. You have a deep influence on them and can manipulate them easily. But you don't use that influence for achieving your end selfishly, or at least most of the time. 8. The wisdom and innate awareness people try to achieve through lifetimes of practice and meditation has been yours since you were a child. As a result, you often felt alienated and alone, detached from your friends and peers. 9. You are a naturally motivated person, someone who is positive and illuminated and in general hopeful about existence. The will to make a better world for yourself and your loved ones is deeply embedded in you. You are a happy and a very loving person. 10. You rarely fall sick. Unlike others who have a tendency to catch colds and coughs, you are a naturally healthier person. You have a very strong immune system and you make sure it stays that way. You take good care of yourself. Words are not just elements of speech or writing. Because 
they can be used to strengthen the effects of magic, which is the art of directing and controlling energy. When spoken out loud, words transform into frequencies and vibrations that could be used to direct energy. This is one of the first steps to creating magic effects. Most people will laugh at the idea of magic being real, but only if they knew what magic really is and how magic is being used to control them. They wouldn't be laughing then, would they? The world is dominated by magic until you train your eyes to see how magic is used to control you. You will never know how the world really works. The controllers who pull the strings of politicians are well aware of how magic works. Many of them actually practice the art of magic, which is why they are sometimes referred to as the dark magicians. Unfortunately, they like to use magic for power and evil purposes, instead of using it to change the world into a better place. The most powerful thing in the universe is energy. If you learn how to control and direct this energy, you will become one of the most powerful people on earth. Why do you think the controllers, dark magicians, are so obsessed with magic and energy? What is the definition of magic? Here is an excerpt from the book titled Word Magic The Powers and Occult Definition of Words that explains what magic is. The word magic is derived from the old French word. Magique, Latin magicus, and Greek magicus. One of the earliest definitions of magic is the art of influencing events and producing marvels using hidden natural forces. Magic has a strong relation with magnetic and electrical energy. Did you not notice that the word magnetic has the word magic in it? Take out net and magnetic and you are left with the word magic. The art of magic is often practicing along with certain words and sacred geometries. The common words that are used in magic rituals are the words that produce powerful sound tones when spoken out loud. These sound tones have powerful vibrational patterns which are used to direct and control energy and harness its power. Sound is able to direct energy for the reason that it carries certain frequency patterns that attract energy to flow in a controllable manner. Furthermore, sound is one of the natural forces used by nature to create crystalline structures and sacred geometries, which are some of the building blocks of matter. Power of Words once you know how words, along with sound, can be used to direct energy to produce magic effects, you will know that words could be as powerful or even more powerful than swords. When you move the letters around in words to the front, you get sword. This is not an accident. Nearly all words in the English language are carefully designed and put together in a way that produces magic effects so that the creators, the dark magicians, of these words can trick you into playing their comedy. Is this hard for you to believe? Are light bulbs flashing like crazy on your head right now? If not, you still have a lot to learn, because you do not even realize that you have been slaved. Maybe this quote from The Matrix could help wake you up. Morpheus. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now in this very room. You could see it when you look outside your window or when you turn on your television. You could feel it when you go for a walk. When you go 
to church, when you pay your taxes, it is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Neo, what truth? Morpheus, that you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch, a prison for your mind. The Matrix is not just a movie, it was an experiment done by the dark magicians to see how people would react to a movie that was telling them the truth, in a metamorphical kind of way. The dark magicians like to tell you what they are doing to you, or planning to do to you, in movies and in TV shows. Binding powers of words and contracts. Another word that they like to use into playing their con game is contract. When you separate contract and have, you get con and tract. As a verb, the word con is defined as a swindle or trick. As a noun, the word tract is defined as a brief treatise or pamphlet for general distribution based on the two definitions. When you put con and track together, you get a deceptive treatise, or a treatise full of trickery. When you sign a contract with a corporation or the government, you are agreeing to a fraudulent and deceptive treatise. In other words, you are being conned. The good news is that pretty much all the contracts you made with corporations and governments and government agencies are fraudulent since they do not come with full disclosure. How to decipher words to find their deeper meanings and intent. If all you do is look at the common definition of a word, you will never know the deeper meaning of it. To find its deeper meanings, you need to look below its surface, dissect its layers, and look at it from many different angles. This means that you may need to use an etymology dictionary to find the origins of the word. Split and rearrange the word using the art of anagram. Once you find the origins of a word, dissect its layers and look at it from many different angles. The true intent and meanings of the word magically become noticeable inside your mind. So next time you look up a definition of a word, do not only look at its face value, but also look at its origins, prefix, and suffix. How words could be used as magic spells. When you speak words, you are casting your thoughts and vibrations into the Earth's magnetic field, or magic field, which is the energy field that creates the reality of Earth. If you are not careful and say certain words together, you can actually cast a spell without even being aware of it. Have you ever wondered why one of the first things they teach you to do in school is how to spell? When you go to school for the first time in your life, you were taught the alphabet, which is made of letters that are designed using sacred geometry. These letters are ideograms which are written symbols that represent ideas. One very important thing you need to know about all written symbols is that they are created into existence from the egg, the dot, and the serpent, the line. The egg and the serpent are important symbols in the religion of secret society. After learning the alphabet, you are taught how to spell using letters of the alphabet. This is to prepare you for the day you could cast magic spells through the use of spelling. Did you notice that magic spell and spelling have the word spell in them? This is no accident. It is right in your face. The 
hidden intent of spelling is to cast magic spells. Most people are too ignorant, lacking in knowledge, so that they have no idea what they are actually doing when they yell harsh words at one another, using swear words or curse words. They did not call them curse words for no reason. Are you starting to see the big picture yet? Why do you think most parents tell their kids to stop cursing when they use swear words too much, even at a subconscious level? We intuitively know that it is not good to use curse words too much. Maybe next time we should listen to our intuition and do some research to find out why we feel that way. The main reason why they teach you how to spell words correctly to make sure that each letter or geometry is arranged the same way every time you write something. This will help you strengthen the effects of certain words. After learning how to spell words, you are taught to cast those spellings into sentences, phrases, and ideas without teaching you about their magic effects. The purpose of this is to prevent you from knowing the true intention of language so that the dark magicians can control your mind using magic spells. Their magic spells cannot control 100% of your mind, but they do affect your mind more than you realize. Just like how subliminal messages can affect your subconscious to a large degree. By now, you should know what I mean when I said earlier that nearly all words in the English language are carefully designed and put together by the minions of the controllers, the dark magicians, to trick you into playing their con game. Most other languages are also created for this purpose. How to protect your mind from spells of the dark magicians. One of the most effective ways to protect your mind from magic spells is to become more aware of them and how they are being used to control you. For example, when a magician does a magic trick, the magician can fool you into believing that the trick is real. However, if you figure out how the trick is done, you can no longer be fooled because you know it is an illusion. In other words, you have become aware of the trick, and it cannot deceive you anymore. The magic trick example is similar to how dark magicians are using real magic spells to control your mind. Once you realize that magic is real, and become aware of how dark magicians are using magic spells to control you, then their magic spells lose their effects. Your awareness is one of the most powerful spiritual powers that you have. Learn how to use it wisely, and the dark magicians will not be able to control you. To learn how to use power of your awareness wisely, you need to learn the right knowledge. With the right knowledge, you can increase and strengthen your awareness. Since you now know how magic affects you, next time you make a wish using words or yell at someone using curse words, you may want to think twice before saying those words. Like they say, be careful what you wish for.
the egg. Warning. This story will blow your mind to a whole new level. Yes. It is true. The story I am about to tell you will be probably one of the best short stories you'll read in your life. I have no doubt about that. Also, the story will blow your mind to a whole new level. It will ascend your thinking and you will never think of life in the same way again. How I know this? Well, I'll let you read it right now and you let me know if I'm wrong. Ock. Ock. The egg. You have died. You were on your way home when you died. It was a car accident, nothing particularly remarkable, but fatal nonetheless. You left behind a wife and two children. It was a painless death. The EMTs tried their best to save you but to no avail. Your body was so utterly shattered you were better off, trust me. And that's when you met me. What? What happened? Where am I? You died, I said, matter-of-factly. No point in mincing words. There was a truck and it was skidding. Yeah. I said, I... I died? Yeah, but don't feel bad about it. Everyone dies. I said, you looked around. There was nothingness. Just you and me. What is this place? You asked. Is this the afterlife? More or less. I said. Are you God? You asked. Yeah. I replied. I am God. My kids, my wife, you said. What about them? The evidence thus far suggests Will they be all right? That in the first few minutes That's what I death, like to see, I said. Not annihilated. You Whether just died and your main concern is your family. But right after death, consciousness That's good is not stuff lost. right there. You looked at me with fascination. To you I didn't look like God. I just looked like some man or possibly a woman. What will it be like? Some vague authority figure, maybe. More of a grammar school teacher than the Almighty. Don't Remember worry, you are going to I die. said. Is the best way I know. They'll Avoid be fine. The you have to lose. Your kids will remember you as perfect in every way. You will find out. They didn't have time to grow contempt for you. What was it like to wake up after having Your wife will sleep. cry on the outside, but be That's secretly really relieved. Important. To be fair, your marriage was falling apart. Kind of if it's any I consolation, mean, she'll I feel very guilty for feeling relieved. Is there not a purpose oh, you me? said. Is there not a purpose in life? So what happens Ooh. now? Do I go to heaven or hell or something? You're ready, Neither, I, wake up, I said. Wake up. You're ready, you'll be reincarnated. Ah, you said. So the Hindus were right. All religions are right in their own way, I, I said. Up. And walk with me. I suddenly got it. You followed along as we strode through the void. I suddenly felt. Where are we going? Nowhere in particular, I said. That I'm thinking. It's just nice to walk suddenly, while we talk. I was so what's the point? Then you asked. Amazing feeling. When I get reborn, I'll just be a blank slate, right? You suddenly see that there isn't a, a grain baby. of dust in the whole universe that's in the wrong place. So all my experiences and everything I did in this life won't matter. What it's all Not about. so. I said. You have within you the all the knowledge and experiences of all past lives. You just don't remember them right now. That I stopped walking exactly and took you by the shoulders. No Your soul is more magnificent, beautiful, and gigantic than you can possibly imagine. A human yeah, mind can only contain a tiny fraction of what you are. It's like sticking your finger in a glass of water to see if it's hot or cold. Take us the 
you put a tiny part of yourself into the vessel, and when you bring it back out, you've gained all the experiences it had. Yes, so you haven't stretched out yet and felt the rest of your immense consciousness. This is while you're under the water. If we hung out here for a long enough, you'd start remembering everything. But there's no point to doing that between each life. How many times have I been reincarnated, then? Oh, lots. Everything changed. I lots and lots. Was very calm and, peaceful and into lots and of different lives. Great. I said, and I had this, very this time around, you'll be a Chinese peasant girl in 540 AD. Wait, what? Everything would be fine. You stammered. Regardless You're of sending me back in time? Not. Well, I guess technically. Time, as you know no it, friend. only exists in your universe. The universe. I was the universe. Things are different where I come from. Where you come from. You said. Oh sure, I explained. I come from somewhere. Somewhere else. And there are others like me. I know you'll want to know what it's like there, but honestly you wouldn't understand. Oh, you said, a little let down. But wait. If I get reincarnated to other places in time, I could have interacted with myself at some point. Sure. Happens all the time. And with both lives only aware of their own lifespan you don't even know it's happening. So what's the point of it all? Seriously? I asked. Seriously? You are asking me for the meaning of life? Isn't that a little stereotypical? Well, it's a reasonable question, you persisted. I looked you in the eye. The meaning of life, the reason I made this whole universe, is for you to mature. You mean mankind? You want us to mature? No, just you. I made this whole universe for you. With each new life you grow and mature and become a larger and greater intellect. Just me? What about everyone else? There is no one else, I said. In this universe, there's just you and me. You stared blankly at me. But all the people on Earth. All you. Different incarnations of you. Wait. I'm everyone. Now you're getting it, I said, with a congratulatory slap on the back. I'm every human being who ever lived, or who will ever live, yes. I'm Abraham Lincoln. I'm Hitler. You said, appalled. And you are the millions he killed. I'm Jesus. And you're everyone who followed him. You fell silent. Every time you victimized someone, I said, you were victimizing yourself. Every act of kindness you've done, you've done to yourself. Every happy and sad moment ever experienced by any human was, or will be, experienced by you. You thought for a long time. Why? You asked me. Why do all this? Because someday, you will become like me. Because that's what you are. You're one of my kind. You're my child. Whoa, you said, incredulous. You mean I'm a god? No. Not yet. You're a fetus. I began to wake up when I was You're still growing. Adults were teaching Once you've lived every human life throughout all time, you will have grown enough to, to be born. So the whole head. universe, That's you said, it's just an egg. A couple of I years answered, later, I had a direct experience of now it's time for you to move on it to your next life. I was riding on a school and I sent you on your way. Bye, Andy Weir. Conclusion. And I just knew that the flow of the feeling you feel right now like you are levitating over yourself that's your mind being blown. System. I felt deeply elevated. 
was somehow made of that You've ascended to a whole new level. This vision was I wish you have a mirror right now to see your face. To trying to figure out how and yes, it is inevitable to think about this when you meet someone else. You will start questioning yourself, can my mother, or my brother, my kid, my wife, my best friend, all be me? You'll think of this when you talk with them. You'll start questioning even more, can this sexy waitress, or Leonardo DiCaprio, or Gandhi, all those terrorists, politicians, soldiers who died in wars, my boss could all of them be really Emmy? But that's ok. Question. Of creation throughout Question the everything and everyone. And how unsustainable Start so seeing the universe through this prism. I figured learning how the Start seeing the world and everyone in it with this eye. Would actually be quite useful. Imagine if we all saw each other like this. Each of these little packets of wholeness that As I one. discovered. So what if this is just a story? It's the story we it's believe in that matters. Its but it's distinct and maybe it's time to change the like story and accept new one. These a story which will make the, the world a better place. No matter what size. It's not and which story is true. To issues as All of THEMR. It's which story the makes you a better person. And how to achieve justice the God. for everyone. P.S. about to explore how. When I think about it, you wrote this text for yourself. This pattern, the, torus. the energy in a torus flows in through one end, circulates around the center, and exits out the other side. It's balanced, self-regulating, and always whole. I was first officially introduced to the Taurus by scientist and inventor Arthur Young. Futurist Dwayne Elgin explains how the Taurus is the primary pattern that nature uses for life at every scale. Evolution means to, uh, to unfold, to roll out. So the question is, what is the universe rolling out? And what the universe is rolling out is self-organizing systems. And you can see this at every scale. A self-organizing system is a technical term for just uh, a system getting a hold of itself, uh, knowing itself, essentially. And uh, if we go to nature, uh, we, can, we can look at and we can see the self-organizing forms uh, throughout. We can see it in, in the cross-section of an orange, the cross-section uh, of an apple. We can see it uh, in the dynamic nature of a tornado. Uh, we can see it in the um, magnetic field around the Earth, a similar magnetic field around a, uh, an individual. We can see it in the structure of an entire whirlpool galaxy. Uh, we can see it in the structure uh, of, a, of a small atom. Uh, at every scale throughout its entire history, the universe has one single project. It's growing toruses. The universe is a torus growing factory. These toroidal dynamics are visible at various scales. One of them is at the galactic level, which are huge spinning structures with billions of stars in it. Looks like typically big arms of galaxies spinning around, and they have vortices that goes from the center out to the edge of the galactic halo that surrounds them. Stars move from this galactic disk out to the halo, down the vortices, and back out again. Stars like Arcturus, for instance, we know, have done that path already. That's the appropriate description even for the atmosphere of our planet. The weather goes from the North Pole down to the equator and then back up, from the South Pole up to the equator and then back down. Even the dynamics on the surface of the Sun are very similar. Of course, here we're looking at it from an external perspective on a small-scale model. When you look at the solar system embedded in the galaxy, embedded in the cluster, embedded in the supercluster. We're traveling in this boundless sea of infinite 